Hi everyone, my name is Piyush Sajdeva and welcome back to another video in the series of Jenkins tutorials for beginners. In this video, we'll be seeing how to integrate Jenkins with GitHub. We'll also have a look at different type of build triggers available in Jenkins. We'll see the first trigger which is build periodically and we'll also discuss the basics of cron syntax with it. We'll have a look at webhook for git SCM polling with demo. And we'll also have a look at SCM polling with demo. We'll discuss the pros and cons of each of them and which is the recommendable. So please watch the video till the end to get most out of this video lecture. And if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below and give this video a thumbs up if you think it was valuable to you. This would really mean a lot to me. And let's get started with the video. Let's have a look how you can authenticate yourself as a valid Jenkins user on any private GitHub repository. So there are many different ways by which you can do that. So SSH authentication is one of the most secure and easiest way to achieve this. So there are two keys involved in this public and private key which you generate and then share among the services and then you should be able to authenticate yourself as a valid user. So let's see how it works. So you have Jenkins and a Git based SCM. So it works with GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab and many other version control system. Jenkins has its own credential store where it stores all the secret text, private public keys, passwords in an encrypted format. So you as a Jenkins admin or as a user would generate the public and private key pair using SSH keygen utility on your server. You'll have your private key and a public key once you do that. Private key is generally stored in a Jenkins credential store and it would be provided a credential ID which you can use in any job. And public key will be uploaded to the GitHub repository. So Jenkins using the private key, it passes that private key to the GitHub repository and asks for the authentication token. Once the key is passed and GitHub matches the public and private key pair and if it finds it valid, then it will authenticate the user as a valid user and you should be able to run your job and you should be able to perform your Git checkout and other Git related commands on that private repository. Now let's go ahead and actually see how the GitHub authentication works. So I'm in my GitHub repositories. So I'll click on new and create a new private repository. I'll give it a name test repo and then I'll select it as a private repository. I'll add a readme file, create repository. Now let's go to our SSH terminal and generate a public private key pair using SSH keygen utility. It generally resides in your home folder inside .ssh directory, which is this one for me. So I probably should have it already. So let me remove the existing keys. IDRSA and then IDRSA.pub. I removed them. So now I don't have it. Let's go ahead and generate a new public and private key pair. So I'll do SSH hyphen keygen. There are other parameters as well with this tool which you can provide, but I'll just keep it default for now and hit enter. And if you keep hitting enter, it will use all the default values for it, which is what we need. So if I do clear and do an ls again, I'll see the new keys that has been generated over here. So I'll take the public key from here, which is idrsa.pub and upload this in our GitHub account. So let's copy it from here. Okay, and go to settings in GitHub page. And SSH and GPG keys over here. Create a new key. Give it a name. Let's call it Jenkins new and I'll paste the content over here. Remove the last blank line and hit add SSH key. Right now let's go to our Jenkins and manage Jenkins. Then manage credentials. Click over here Jenkins then global credentials and add a 
new credential. So we have different credential type to select it from username and password, GitHub app, GitLab API token, SSH, username and private key and so on. But GitHub recently removed, if you are not an enterprise customer, GitHub recently removed the support for username and password type credential. So we'll be using SSH username and private key, which is this one. Let's select this and then scope. I'll keep it as default for all the jobs. Then I'll give it an ID. Let's call it Jenkins. I'll use the same description. Username I'll give Ubuntu. And then private key, we have to upload the private key over here. So click over here, enter directly and then click add. So I have to paste the private key over here. So if I go back to my terminal, clear the screen and I'll do a cat on ID RSA. So this is my private key. I'll copy the content of it. And I'll paste it over here. Remember to remove the last line over here as well. Click OK. Okay, the credentials has been stored over here. If I go back over here and I create a new item, let's call it test hyphen git and choose the freestyle project. Click OK. So I have to provide the GitHub URL over here. So let's click over here. And I'll go back to my repository, which is this one test repo. I'll select the HTTPS, click on copy and I'll paste it over here. Now, because I'm not passing any credential and it is a private repository, that is why you're getting the authentication error. So to overcome this error, what I have to do is we have to first use the SSH URL, which is from here. So I'll replace it with the SSH URL and then use the credential that we have stored. This is the private key. Now we are getting permission denied because we haven't used the credentials yet. So let's select this and this error should be gone. All right. Now the next important thing to remember over here is GitHub recently changed the default branch name from master to main. You see the branches to build over here is master because this used to be the default branch. But now if you go to the repository main is the default branch that has been created. So make sure you make this update over here. I'll replace the master to main. All right. Click on apply and save. Once you do that and click on build now, build should be triggered over here and status is success. So let's see what it did. First of all, it built the job in the workspace. Then it did git rev pass and git config, git version to check if the client has been installed and then it fetch the git repository from the private repository. And this is the message for our initial commit. So our first step is done. Now let's go back to the job configuration section and go to build triggers. So there are different options by which we can trigger the build. For this job, when we clicked on build now, then only it triggered the build. That means by default it is a manual trigger. But we have different option to set it from. We will not be looking into each one of those, but only the important one, which is poll SCM, GitHub webhook and build periodically. So let's see what these options are. The first one is build periodically. Build periodically, as you see, it is used to automate the time-based job execution. So it has a cron based syntax. If we go back and we use this one build periodically, you see, you can provide your schedule over here, like a cron syntax. If you want it to run every minute, then this is the syntax that you would choose. So let's see a little more into what type of syntax is a cron syntax. Okay. So there are usually five fields in this syntax represented default by five asterisks. So the first one represents minutes and allowed values are zero to 59. Second one is R allowed values are zero to 23. Third one is day of month and allowed value is one to 31. The next one is month allowed values as you have guessed right one to 12. 
and then day of week. This is from 0 to 6 and it starts with Sunday and ends on Saturday. So let's see you want to trigger a build on every Saturday. Every Saturday the option that we have provided is a day of the week. So we'll be updating this particular field over here day of the week and you see Saturday is 6 number 6. So this is what we'll use. So over here in place of asterisk it will be 6 and rest of the places it will be asterisks. So once you use this one over here like this then it will trigger your build on every Saturday. Alright. Now let's go back and see if few more examples. So let's say you want to trigger your build on every Saturday but only at 11 pm at a certain time. So first you will use 6 for Saturday and then we have an hour of the day right 11 pm which is this one because this is represented in 24 hours format so we'll be using 23 over here as 11 pm right and for rest of the places we'll use asterisk. So now this build will run on every Saturday at 11 pm at 2300 hours. Let's see one more example. If we want to trigger the build on every Saturday at 11.45 pm. So we have one more condition added which is minutes. So for Saturday again 6, for 11 pm it is R and for 45 minutes this should be the first one. So Saturday 11.45 pm and for rest it should be star. I hope you have got it now and you could practice this more. You could understand the, the cron syntax better. I'll paste the link as well of the official cron page and you could just have a glance at it. There is one more thing that I want to discuss it with you before we move ahead. So let's say if you want to trigger build at every five minutes. So for that you have to use asterisk divide by n to every nth interval of time. What I mean by that is if you want to run your build at every 10 minutes then you would use star divide by 10 and for rest of the places as asterisk. So for this example if we want to run it for every 5 minutes then it will be asterisk by 5. So this build will run at every 5 minutes with star and asterisk at the rest of the places. I hope this would be clear now. Okay, So this is how we could add the build periodically and uh, use the syntax over here. Let's uncheck this one and let's see the other option which is a github webhook trigger and pole SCM. So webhook for git SCM polling. Let's see how it works. So let's say you have Jenkins and your GitHub repository. So they are connected with each other through a webhook. Whenever a user pushes a code to the GitHub repository or generated any event like delete something or create a pull request or we could choose the events that you want it to trigger the job for. Once the user perform that commit then Jenkins will receive a push event from GitHub that something has been done and Jenkins perform the one time SCM polling. That means I've got the event now I'm gonna check out the repository because there has been a change in the repository. This is how git SCM polling is done. Let's have a look and set it up uh, on our GitHub repository. So first we'll go to the GitHub go over here settings and then click over here webhook and add a new webhook. So you need to provide your payload URL over here. This is a webhook URL uh, which is something like this. So your Jenkins URL and then uh, github hyphen webhook at the end. So let me just get my Jenkins URL from here till the port and replace it with this. Make sure you have the backslash at the end as well else it will fail. Okay. Then I'll select the content type as application and JSON. And we have three options to choose from. If you want it just for the push event, send me everything. That means for every single activity on your GitHub repo, Jenkins will trigger the job. This is something that you wouldn't want. 
And the last one is this one in which you can select the activities on which you would want Jenkins to do the SCM polling and trigger the job. So you could select uh, basically pushes and pull requests and then hit over here, add webhook. And that should be it. This should be the simplest form. And if you go to your job now, you just have to select that option, which is this one, GitHub trigger for Git SCM polling, click apply and save. Now we have only two builds over here and it's not triggering any build. We are not, we are not uh, doing a manual trigger. However, let's uh, simulate this with the help of a git push. So I'll go back to my repository and I'll add a new file, create a new file, give it a name and then enter some content, hit on commit new file. Once you do that and you go back to a Jenkins, you would see a job that has been triggered for you. So as soon as we made the change instantly within few microseconds or within a couple of seconds, it triggered the job for you. And if you click on the job, go to console output, you will see it started by a GitHub push by my ID. So it will also tell you the event, how the event got generated, how the push was started and who started it. That means who committed on the GitHub repository. So with this method, you wouldn't have to provide Jenkins access to your developer to trigger any job. They would just commit their changes to their deployment branch or their feature branch and job will be triggered for them. Let's have a look at the next option, which is SCM polling. This is a little different from the Git webhook polling because it doesn't have a webhook. We have Jenkins and GitHub over here and they are connected with a continuous SCM polling. That means Jenkins is continuously polling the GitHub repository for any changes. So whenever a user performs any code commit, Jenkins will receive a push event from GitHub because Jenkins is continuously polling to the GitHub. This is not the recommended method because it would increase the load on the server on the SCM repository because Jenkins is continuously polling it and uh, it would degrade the performance of the source code repository. So that is why it is not the recommended approach. But in case if you want to use it, that's how you use it. So you go to your job, click over configure section and from the build trigger section, you select Pull SCM. You can specify your schedule over here. So schedule over here would be like after how many seconds or how many minutes you would have to check for the changes. All right. This is similar to ground syntax. Again, if you want to pull it like every, every one minute, then you could use this sort of syntax and it will run for every one minute. If you wanted to pull the SCM for every five minute, will do this. The difference between this schedule and build periodically schedule is when you provide any schedule in the build periodically section, it will trigger the build at that time, whether or not there are new changes that has been committed or not. But this one over here, it will only check in the SCM whether there are changes. If there are any changes from the last poll, then only it will trigger the job else it will skip the job trigger. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have learned something out of it. I was helpful to you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below to get notified about all my upcoming videos. This was the fourth video in the series of Jenkins tutorial for beginner. There'll be a lot more coming in the future. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you very soon with the next video. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.